Good morning, guys. Um, it's three in the morning, so sorry for the picture being a little like it is. Um, I just don't want to wake up my wife or my dog. So, but the Lord woke me up, and I've been up in prayer since earlier. Um, goes along with guarding our heart message that the Lord gave me, but he gave me a scripture a couple nights ago, and it was James. He said, go to James 1. Three through six. I said, okay, Lord. <clears throat> Should I go get it now? And he said, no. But also, three, I mean, um, six through 10. Okay, Lord. So, and what do I do? So I went to bed, knew that scripture they want me to look up, but I didn't feel really led to go look it up, so I didn't. Wanted to, kind of, but okay, God. But I had a dream that night, and that's why the Lord was telling it. I mean, it was very specific too. And He said, "It's going to be a one-two, almost like a, almost like a knockout punch." all this mess that's going on with the coronavirus, the political system, the world at large. But I'm going to break it down a little bit and then tell you why. But the first part, three through six, is about, you know, lacking wisdom, double-minded man, double man is unstable in all his ways. The last part of it... <clears throat> Is about the lowly being exalted and the rich man being brought low. Why? Okay, we can't we can't be double minded, guys. A house divided cannot stand. When our when our mind is not on the mind of Christ, we're sucked into this vortex. I've been there too, guys. I had to kind of back off this a lot of social media because it's so easy to get sucked into. Why? Because it is wizardry and sorcery. And we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but spiritual wickedness in high places. It's nefarious stuff going on, of course, all around us, and it's all revolved around the money and death. Steal, kill, and destroy. And we get, I have to say this, guys, because I'm a, I'm a watchman, okay? I'm not saying this to, to, to glorify any of this. I'm saying this as warnings that what we, so we can see what's going on and rightly divide the word. That's why the Bible says, try the spirit to see if it's the spirit of the Lord. But if our mind is so clustered up, that's where the double-mindedness comes in with the things and the cares of this life. Your internet, your phone, your tablets. Man, everybody's just like <laughs> busy, 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 so busy they can't stop to hardly breathe, enjoy their family, nobody has meals together. Now they do. A lot more than they did because it's coronavirus mess. And we are going to start gathering back together, starting to gather back together, but God wants it the right way. The reason why he pulled the plug to level the playing field, and some people got mad at me when I put this message out about one, one virus took out the church. 90%, 95%. It didn't take out all the church. And a lot of people that were in the church, it just redirected us, guys, because a lot of the houses were built upon sand. A handful of people... Just like the political system is a mess now, it's a hand, you know, thousands or whatever, but compared to the millions that are out here, are destroying this land. Well, same was from within with the church, with all this corny, phony gospel stuff. Some of it doesn't even correlate to the Bible at all. Some of them don't even use the Bible. All kinds of crazy stuff out there, guys. That people aren't getting in prayer. And seeking God. Yes, we should gather together, of course. Yes, we should 
if your church is large enough, you should support the, the, the person that's feeding you, pastor, whatever you want to call them. Why? Because so that they can keep their mind upon things of the Lord. If they're really, really, really a true shepherd, you want that. So that they don't have to worry about if their light bill is going to get paid or their you know, kids are going to eat or any of that stuff so that they can get their mind That'd be so dumb, you know, because it, it, there's a war going on, guys, for, the, for our minds. It could be because the enemy wants to enter into our hearts. So he starts up here. There's a main theme I'm getting to, too, guys, here about the swirly, twirly stuff. I'm, you know, don't get, don't, I'm not saying don't vote. I'm not saying don't be involved in politics. I'm not saying any of that. But yet I am. Because it's got sucked into something. That's why I put out there, why wait till November 3rd? And actually there's a typo in there. I put November 8th because one of the things that I'm battling is and it's a physical mind issue. I've had some physical problems and issues. The doctor report was horrible, but God's report moderate to severe stuff. But God reports not. I'm still on the wheel. I'm still here molding and shaping me. It's got me closer to him because it's been a lot of, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, staying in the need of prayer. But it's been the health and my time. <clears throat> but I know God is able. More than able. He's done so many miraculous things, even in some of that. Even me being here, guys, honestly, I'm just, you know, one day I'll share it with you, but right now, no. But we can't let our mind be sucked into this world. The news is full of it. The political system is full of it. Lies, deceit, nefarious stuff. The world's full of it. It's all about the money, the power. All that stuff. Why? Who's behind it? Guys, it's not a wake-up call. It's kind of like, you know, a reality check. Really, honestly. From the Lord. The enemy of our soul. The devil himself. Seeking to kill, steal, kill, and destroy. The biggest... You know, people don't want to hear this, aren't going to want to hear this, and I'm not trying to do it to be antagonistic. The biggest sin we've got, guys, is we've been a murderous nation. The killing of our unborn children. Let's just get real here, guys. Why is it? It's to cover up the sin of the flesh. To taint what God did procreation that's why all the sexual deviant stuff is there but the media wants that that's what they're hiding behind at the mask is the, the biggest thing is to kill but to steal kill and destroy steal your liberty still you can't go to church and if you don't like it we'll kill you you don't like our opinion, we'll kill you. Laughing about different politicians, laughing about, and celebrities, laughing about murdering people. You know, we've idolized it, guys. That's the double-sided mind. And, and, and when you turn it on, it's, like I said, it's like, how many have heard this when you were kids, or you teach your kids, look both ways, look both ways. We keep narrating that same, same thing until they do. Look both ways before you cross the street. God's warning us, guys. Get out of this double-minded and get the mind of Christ. Be 
because we want to turn, turn off the world and turn on our prayer, our communication with him, supplication with him. Malachi 3, he hears our prayers and he has a book of remembrance and he writes them down. I mean, I know some people that, um, my mother-in-law would like that. There's a lot of people that make lists and stuff. You know, I need to, but more than I do. But a lot of people that are, especially in the professional realm, and they're real successful, and that's what they do. They're pretty thorough and detailed. God cares enough about you that he writes down your prayers in a book of remembrance. Read it. That's what he wants you to do, guys. He wants us to get back to him. And out of this, whether the church is open, whether it's not, wherever we gather, you know, that kind of gets, gets to people too. It's just all this stuff that can drift you into. And then I'm going to, Put this out there because I meant to look it up and I'm sorry I didn't so I don't want to but I also don't want to sensationalize it was the older black man that was killed not too long ago and the media or not the media but the YouTube and the Facebook stuff just blew up everybody's like he was killed because he was a Trump supporter probably true to an extent Look at the pictures, guys. One side, he had a sign about being a Trump supporter. But the other side, there was a sign. You could, it was almost like hidden, barely could see it. But Matthew 25, I think it was 12. He was standing on the word. I'm not politicizing this and saying that, you know, because that's what's happened. Everybody's connotated that. I'll just say this, guys. The political system has, you know, made politicians gods, including Trump or the others, you know, picking a side and the double mindedness, guys. That's what happened in the church. We've idolized preachers and pastors. People have taken the apostles, prophets, and, and even the Pope. Everybody wants to be one of those because they don't want to, they don't want to listen to anybody, including God. And that goes to the last point that's in this. It's just time to get out of out of our mind. He said he chastises those that he loves. I'll end with this and go into the second point of this message. Elijah in the cave. One of my messages. What are you doing here? God said, what are you doing here? Kind of like, dude, what are you doing here? Why, why are you here? I'm running, I'm hiding. Hearing for my life, hiding in a dark cave. Sound familiar? Some of us don't have to have caves. It's in our some of it's in our hearts because we buried stuff so so long. And we it gives us this weird mentality of, of who God really is. God, Jesus, the Holy Ghost, and His Word. And that's why we got to just come boldly before the throne. We got to just get it out. You want to turn back to God? Start at five in the morning when there's no, everybody's asleep right now. My wife's awesome, she's a great person. Holy, pure, clean, living person. Great, awesome example of Christ. But she's asleep. And she gets up early, she used to get up earlier than me and then I'd sleep. Right now I'm up, but it's quiet. Me and God. And I came and prayed before I put this message out, guys, because I want to get it right. 
I love you. Um, I'm going to go to my second point in the end. Because the second point can be pretty quick. There's a reason, guys. I've got to get out of this mind and quit getting drawn into a battle that may not be ours and it's conflict. But second point, the lowly, the close to those that are broken heart, contrite spirit, and then the rich are going to be brought low. It has nothing to do with, you know, because everybody jumps on that bandwagon. Everybody wants a new house, new car. You know, and if you say anything about money, that gets it gets twisted really quick. But there's a reason why most of us aren't millionaires and billionaires, guys, because it would destroy us. So take the manna from heaven, because it's sufficient. Just like His grace, there's so many things God's done in your life. We're pretty spoiled in the country. You know, I got lights on, power on, computers on, drinking coffee that was warm and fresh this morning to wake me up. Had the money to buy the coffee. Car to get there. Store to even get it. Of course, I walked in without a mask. I don't wear one everywhere I go. I stick one in my pocket. Somebody asks, sometimes I pull it out. I don't even put it on, honestly. I'm not trying to be that jerky guy and I hear all that non-masker garbage. It's back to the same thing. There's a reason why I won't wear a mask is because of the spirit that's behind it. It's not, it's not a health issue. It's a spiritual issue. The spirit of death and destruction and to steal, kill, and destroy. And like I said, the abortion issue and the murderous rampage has gotten in our hearts. We've lost a whole generation. But the money thing, guys, is, I get it. I've got some friends, one of them happens to be overseas evangelist, preacher. Over in India, I've got other friends too, different countries, but if he told me he was going to walk home, I'm going to follow the dude when he comes over to visit. Is it walking across an ocean thousands of miles away? No. He have a plane fare. He has to have a hotel to stay with his family. He have a car. Money. So yes, it's not a naive message, guys. Necessary, some things are necessary. But the love of money is where this is going because that's what got all twisted up. Because, you know, just the reality check, guys. A little, whatever it is, hydrocodone or whatever they, I'm sorry, I don't know, don't know the name of the medicine real good. Inexpensive medication may or may not work. You get cut off because I want to give you a vaccine that's expensive, but there's a spirit behind the vaccine too. But it's all greed, the love of money, all this technology, the love of money. That's an old lame argument. It doesn't doesn't work really. I need. I got a bunch of the scriptures about how the wages of you know, they hold back the wages. Everybody's like, oh, the economy, we're going to, you know, put money back into it. Some some companies do, but the vast majority of now it's all about the money. They don't create jobs to help you as much as they're doing it to help themselves, to stack up the money. They're just hiding in plain sight. Basic, guys. But that's why God doesn't, doesn't want us to get caught up in that. That's another part of the double-mindedness, but he doesn't want us to get caught up in that realm. Sure, he wants us to have nice things, of course, and to be blessed, of course. But what if the blessing is that you've got a right mind, that your children and your grandchildren are all healthy, that you're not on drugs 
or a drunken in a drunken stupor or you turn left when you want to go right a different direction even then you or you're going somewhere and you decide to go a different direction well, what if it's to keep you from getting in a major car wreck there's so many things, protection, manna from heaven, grace, mercy, and truth. Abraham and Lot, perfect example, but I'm gonna end with that, guys. But you let Lot pick. Of course he picked what looked good. Everybody would. So we've got to get out of this mind, guys, this double, double-minded mind. Yes, the, the vote's important, but not really, not anymore. Look at it, guys, everybody barking about the mail-in votes and the, this and that. And it's already a, almost, you know, I've got a strong spirit of discernment, and so do a lot of y'all. Kind of already a setup, guys, honestly. Pick, it's not even pick a side. The president's saying the same thing that Congress is saying. It's going to be a mockery. And that's why I said, why wait? Because us as Christians, we're in this world, but not of this world. We don't have to wait till a certain date. Some man picked in November. In November. Honestly, our vote probably doesn't doesn't have that much value anymore. It doesn't count. I hate to say that. And so I'm not, but then that becomes double-mindedness and an idol too. Our prayer does matter though. Our communication with, with God that created heaven and earth, God, Jesus, the Holy Ghost, and His Word is where I'm going with this, guys. We don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, and spiritual wickedness in high places. We don't have to vote these people out. We have to pray these people out. We may not even see what's coming. Stand. But it's going to be on your knees. No more theology, cheap talk. Mealy mouth. That's what this whole preacher, this old black preacher, he sat, sat in there for six years, honestly. Long time. Mealy mouth, six hundred dollar briefcase and a one dollar message. The message it's to all of us guys, if we're listening, not with this, but with our heart, bringing it before the Lord, and you're not going to get it with this device of distractive technology and all this other stuff. Turn it off. I get with him. I'll see you at five in the morning. Okay guys, it's almost five now, three thirty-five. So we'll see you guys in an hour and a half. God will see us all. Love you guys. Talk to you soon.